Well, our first step here is going to have to be going to follow some poles. With that, we're going to be using a super cool saw. I'm excited about it. Let's go cut some poles down. When you're going to go harvest your poles, this is what you're looking for. Nice, dead standing trees. You can see by the patch there of dead removed bark, this tree is definitely a dead standing. That's what we're looking for for our poles. So here we have the Silky Katana Boy 650. Massive saw, excellent cutting power, and you feel like you're a ninja. Ha! All right, let's start cutting. That's the power of the ninja.
So I want to uh, lash these four posts together in a tripod lash kind of style like you can see here. We will be using four posts for this wiki up, but it's the same sort of lashing style, only we're adding an additional post to it. Uh, the snow is really deep and I really don't want to freeze my hands when I'm attempting to wrap the cordage and stuff. So what I'm going to do is use a couple extra poles, throw them up like that, <clears throat> add an additional stick across, <clears throat> and kick the snow out where I'm going to be lashing. Now I can pull my poles on top. Like that. I'll move the camera in and do a close up of the lashing for you guys to see it. Izzy's after a squirrel. What I'm going to use <coughs> is a clove hitch. with a stop knot on it. Now that that's done, all I want to do is go around These sticks are essentially going to be holding all the way to the structure. So you don't want to get too cheesy on, on tying it up because you want it to last. So All right, so that's plenty of times going around. Now I'm going to just whack off the length of this cord. <sighs> like that. Now what you want to do is start to frap it. Frapping is just wrapping perpendicular to the parallel lashings that you had just put on. Oh, oh I'll come play in a minute. Izzy's a little upset I haven't played with her much. Oh, I know. I know, I know. We got so much going on this weekend that I think we're focusing too much on things that aren't as much the priority. And you got stuff like a, a beautiful husky dog. It's like any other member of your family. She requires a lot of attention and should be a focus of a lot of your your time and your attention because it's only fair to her. So now to finish this I've just brought it back over to the opposite log again strictly just because it's easier for me to tie a knot on this side. There's a lot more space over here. 
So same thing, I'm going to finish it off with the clove hitch with a stopper knot. Excellent. Now when Caleb gets back with the next load of limbs, we'll stand it up. So now that everything is all lashed, we are going to stand the wiki up, up the four main poles. Spread them out much like you would a tripod, only it's a quad pod. Ready? So this is the frame. The main four poles of the wiki up. We've got more poles that we will be adding in. Just as an example. High five. This is where we're at. Caleb and Marsh are still getting spruce boughs. We've started to put some of the cover on here. You can see there's a long ways to go. You can see through it in just about every capacity, which means it just is not good enough. So we gotta get a lot more boughs and throw them on there. Get it covered, but the framework is all done to this point. So now it's just a matter of covering it. It was a long haul to get here, let me tell you. With all the snow stumbling through the snow pack and these big long poles, takes a lot out of you. But we got all the framework done, threw on the few little bit of boughs that were brought over already. And uh, yeah. We're just going to keep doing that, heap them on there good and thick so it's weatherproof. Beautiful shelter. So we just about got step two done up here, which is leaning all the poles together on top of the quad pod that we made and stood up. We almost have that part done, and then we're moving on to the covering. There's not really much to note to date. Cutting poles is cutting poles, leaning them up against our quad pod. There's nothing special to that. You guys had previously seen us lash the quad pod together. And uh, yeah, then we're going to be moving on to cutting boughs and, and just covering the whole thing thoroughly with boughs. But we're getting there. We're getting there. Little bits and pieces of stuff that we come across. We kind of jumped around here and there. They were collecting quite a bit earlier and kind of throwing some on as we were going. It's tiring. Very tiring work. So to note about the boughs, you always want to put the branch end facing up. That is the natural watershed of the needles. So you want to make sure that you have them the branch of it facing up, the greens facing down, that's the best way to shed water. Uh, spruce, any sort of the, the, the conifer spruce is a lot better than pine. 
I don't have cedar or anything like that here. My options basically are spruce boughs and or pine boughs. I will pick spruce as much as I can as it's they just way more coverage. Anyways, lots more to come, stick around. When you're looking for spruce boughs, this is what you're going for. Nice big bushy trees like this with a lot of coverage. Be sure to only pick boughs from here and there. Don't harvest them all off one tree. Move on to the next. That's where you would look to find natural coverage for this. I'm going to be honest, for our wiki up, we just had a good portion of the property logged because of the pine beetle. So I'll be honest that we just went into the limb pile and took the boughs from there. I'm not going to go damage or, or hurt a living tree when I have something that's going to die already. I'll utilize that before I'll ever attempt to go after a living tree.
The wiki up is almost finished now, it's first coating. Then I leave it settle for about a week before I put the second coat of branches on because that makes it the bow settle down so that you don't have the massive air gap in between. It's almost impossible to cover it thoroughly with that. So I'll leave it about a week before I put the second covering on, but this is where we're at now. Turned out absolutely fantastic. I'm really happy with it. You can see the off-grid cabin there in the background. Izzy having a sleep there. The back of the debris hut and the lean-to there. And the lavu set up over on the side. Super pumped. Nice wiki up. Well this is it guys. This is our finished wiki up at least to the first coat. Like I said the second coat has to be about a week away to give the bows time to settle. Then once they settle you'll see how that looks quite sparse on the, the wall on the inside. Once they settle, then you have more of a chance to fill them in. If you keep put piling boughs on, it just, uh, you'll never get it fully covered because it's too much loft in between and it'll always be holes. So if you leave it settle, I like about a week, then the, the boughs will settle down a lot more and then it's easier to fill in them holes. That's it though, that's our, our wiki up. It's not nearly as big as the one at the cabin. Or the one, our other one anyways, where our old base camp is. But, uh, yeah, turned out good, we're really happy with it. Took a lot of work, I'm not gonna lie. It's a nice one man wiki up. One day we'll come out and light a fire in it. So to give you guys the full circle here of the base camp now, we'll start at the off-grid cabin there, turning to my left. Now we have the wiki up, the debris hut, the lean-to common area, there's the family, the bushcraft walls, and we're back to the base camp or the off-grid cabin. So you can see it's coming along good. The base camp, we're quite happy with it. The wiki up turned out good. Really, really happy with that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. That is how you make your own wiki up. Thank you.